Okay, so I have been listening to these all morning. These are the Beats, the new Beats Studio Buds. And, uh, you know, listening to them got me thinking. I, we've been talking a lot about lossless audio. We've been talking about spatial audio. We've been talking about all this kind of stuff. And in the, the specter in the back of everything is seemingly like audio file. Like, I've called myself an audio file, uh, it, for lack of a better term, at times. And the problem with that phrase is that audio file doesn't necessarily connote fan of music. I mean, yes, you are a fan of music if you're an audiophile, but audiophile means something more than just audio than just liking music. To be an audiophile, I guess you kind of have to also be into the hobby of collecting gear and and discussing it or something like that. I mean, there there are forums online that are you know, it doesn't matter what it is. There's there's forums online talking about uh, like guitars. There's forums online talking about smartphones. There's forums online talking about just about anything out there. And there are also forums online talking about stuff that would fall under the category of you know audio file. But in my experience, those forums and those discussions are never actually all that much about music. I'm not saying, again, that audiophiles are not music fans. They are most definitely music fans, but audiophiles are hobbyists. They are collectors of gear. They are cork sniffers. It's the great snipe hunt, right? The great snipe hunt of chasing like the perfect audio. $10,000 on cables. You know, all kinds of different things that everybody will tell you makes a big difference or doesn't make a big difference. And maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's the placebo effect. Whatever it is, I guess if it's your thing and you like it, and you enjoy it, then that's great. But I'm reluctant to talk about music when talking about something that might f fall under the category of audiophile. Like, these headphones here would not be audiophile headphones. Now, I've listened to tons of headphones. I've listened to some very bad headphones. I've listened to some very good headphones. And in the you know, a couple of days that I've spent with these, so far, they've actually been impressing me in their audio quality. There are a couple of other things that I'm still looking at in terms of functionality and everything like that. But the things that you immediately notice when you listen to headphones are the sound quality and with these kinds of headphones, the fit and the finish. So the fit of these is very nice, very comfortable, actually nicer than my AirPods Pro. Uh, so they're very nice and very comfortable. And the sound has been surprisingly good. I, I would say that the sound is a little full. So if you like sort of a fuller, not necessarily bassier, but more beefy sound, then these things are, are probably up your alley. Especially uh, comparing, comparing them to the AirPods Pro, they have a much sort of forward and beefier sound. And that can be a good thing. I enjoy I enjoy that sound signature. Now, if I was really listening critically, I wouldn't want that sound signature. I would want something a little bit more flat, right? And so now I'm starting to use those audio file terms. And I come by it honestly in the sense that I've been doing this for a very long time. And I've been talking about headphones and listening to music and making music and studying music and, and all kinds of stuff like that ever since I was 15 years old. I am going to turn 50 in four months. Four months from now, I will turn 50, which means if you go back to when I first like got on stage with the band when I was 14, then I have been doing this in one way or another for 35 years. Now, audiophiles are not necessarily musicians. In fact, a lot of times musicians are not audiophiles. And even though I've called myself an audiophile, I would not honestly say that I am because of the cork sniffing connotation. Now, why is an audiophile more than or less than, depending on how you look at it, than just a fan of music, a lover of music? Why is it not a good thing to be an audiophile? Well, because I think a lot of times when you're an audiophile, 
whether it's with headphones and DACs and amps or receivers or, you know, power amps and giant speakers or whatever it is. A lot of times when that becomes your focus and you're on the great snipe hunt to find the perfect gear to reproduce the music perfectly, then you lose track of the music. You lose track of what it is that you have gotten to that point for. And this has sort of been in my thoughts because of all this high fidelity, lossless audio stuff. Some people say you can't hear it. Some people say you can. I know for myself, I most definitely can hear it. I know that if you've listened to music for a long time, you've critically listened, you've trained yourself to be able to hear, you know, all of the, the little bits and pieces and parts of stuff that you can hear it. But all this talk about lossless audio has got me thinking about whether or not lossless audio matters. And that has got me thinking about whether or not audiophiles or being an audiophile even is worth it. And the answer is no. Music is not something that is made better by the devices through which it plays. Music is a is the constant in this sort of equation, right? Music is the immutable thing. You take a recording of a piece of music, and it doesn't matter if that piece of music was recorded yesterday or if it was recorded in 1952 by Hank Williams. If that music successfully engages your emotions, gets you moving or gets you feeling something or gets you longing for a lost loved one or whatever it does, it doesn't matter what it's playing through. And that, to me, is what gets lost in all of this discussion. Lossless audio doesn't matter, okay? Lossless audio doesn't matter. Spatial audio doesn't matter. They're both things that can enhance your enjoyment of music, potentially. The gear that you're listening to doesn't matter. The gear that you hope to have one day is not going to make the music better. In this day and age of the internet where everybody is like overanalyzing everything and there's a thousand YouTube channels and a thousand forums and a Reddit subreddit and all this other stuff about the most minute details of anything, we can't lose track of the fact that music has existed will exist, will continue to exist, the way that it's recorded will change, the way that it's performed will change, what it's being performed on will change. But the constant of music, the goal of music in the first place, is to somehow reach out and grab the listener and do something that moves them in a way that they might not have been moved in that moment otherwise. That's why we listen to music. And if we lose track of that and we talk about gear, or if we lose track of that and we talk about lossless audio, or if we lose track of the fact that, you know, these beats sound pretty decent and it doesn't, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If they're in your price range and you want to buy them, you can buy them. Ultimately though, they are just the vehicle. The music itself is what matters. Doing this YouTube channel, I have gone back and forth. I've talked about good gear, bad gear, etc., etc. And a lot of the times, I just want to say, you know what? I don't freaking care. I don't freaking care if I don't care what these sound like. I don't care what these sound like. I don't care what these sound like or these speakers in front of me. Right now, I'm thinking like I've got $150 studio monitors, the $300 for the pair. Cali Audio LP6s sitting right here in front of me. And I put them up because I moved my desk and my Atom A7Xs were still sitting up there. I didn't feel like pulling them down and setting them up while I was setting this up. So I brought the Callies out of storage and I brought them out here and I put them up. And all of a sudden I started listening through the Callies and I'm like, oh my God, these sound fantastic. I listened to some mixes that I had done. I listened to some music that I know well. And I'm thinking like, what? This is a $300 set of speakers. So they shouldn't sound this good. They shouldn't be doing what they're doing, but they are. These can, these can, these can. So now it's like, okay, so do I sell my $1,500 a pair uh, Atom A7Xs and just go with these Callies? Because 
I listen to the mixes that I've done on the atoms, and they translate well into these Callies, and these Callies are just a fraction of the price. These are $100 less than these. At the end of the day, what you're using to hear music doesn't matter. By that extension, what I talk about on this YouTube channel half the time doesn't matter either. People want to find the best value for the dollars that they have. People want to, you know, people want to geek out on stuff because it's it's interesting to them. I get it. Audiophiles, you know, part of their lifestyle, part of their hobby is to collect the gear as much as it is to listen to the music. But none of it matters. None of it matters. The only constant in the equation is the music. And once you lose track of the music and you start to only think about the gear and you start to only think about the, the name brands and you start to only think about the price differences and all those kinds of things, you start to lose the thread. You start to lose, you start to lose the whole idea of what you're trying to accomplish in the first place. When you're listening to music, when you're making music, what you're trying to accomplish in the first place is to... If you're making it, express yourself. If you're listen, listening to it, somehow appreciate the expression that someone else has made. Music is a connection. All art is about connection. If we look at the vehicles that take us to the destination and lose sight of the destination itself, then the vehicle doesn't matter anymore. If you classify yourself as an audiophile, I suppose that's fine. But I caution you to only to listen to the music and, and not get hung up in the, the gear because I've done that. And I got to be honest, like I have lessened the pleasure that I get from music over the years by fretting over the speakers that I'm listening to or the, the headphones that I have on my head or some or whatever that that is. OK, I have put the gear first and lost sight of the music and the experience of listening to it and what I can gain from that. So if you count yourself as an audiophile, keep that in mind. If you count yourself as a music lover, but you somehow feel like an inferior because you don't know everything about everything, you can't afford the super expensive gear, you can only afford this, you can only afford that, none of that matters. Don't lose sight of the music. Yes, we'll talk about the gear. Yes, we'll talk about all the minutia, all of the this, that, or the other thing, how does this compare to that? But in the end, let's remember that we're also talking about music. In fact, down in the comments below, tell me the song or the album or the artist that really spurred you to become a music lover. Not an audiophile, not, an, you know, not any sort of esoteric thing, but a music lover. Let me know what that is down there in the comments and we'll have a we'll have an interesting discussion. I'm really looking forward to it. Once thanks so much for listening. I mean, you know, this is just me like extemporaneously discussing something that's been on my mind, but you know, until the next time, I'm out.